Hey, what is up, YouTube? It's Rich. All right, sorry, this was a little tricky to set up. Uh, today, I thought I would follow up with the um, going through original art video with uh, like a basic primer on pricing original art. And look, whenever you talk about money and uh, art and commerce together, it can make some people uncomfortable. Look, the the reality is, is we put a lot of passion into this stuff. Um, and then the other reality is, is ultimately there's a value placed on it. Um, some stuff is valueless. Some stuff is very desirable. Um, some stuff, you know, it's, there's a lot of really, really interesting things. So, so a little background on me and original art. Um, I got hired at Wildstorm in 1995. I started collecting art probably two months later. Um, kind of a fun side story to that is when I got hired at Wildstorm, um, I was really, really like unaware of comic books and all that stuff. I had only really been even collecting comic books for about a year. I, you know, I came from a music background. I'd always been good at art and, uh, I picked up inking, um, I, I, a guy that I knew, um, from my band was a professional inker and I just, I learned, I learned it really, really quick. I got pretty good and I got work, um, you know, but I hustled hard for, for a <laughs> certain amount of time, but I won't get into all that. But anyway, so, uh, about a month after I was hired at Wildstorm, a guy named Scott Doombeer was hired at Wildstorm and he was brought in as uh, a new extension of the company called Wildstorm Fine Arts. Scott had already been an art dealer. Scott's originally from New York. And uh, so he came out to California, um, had had a relationship with Jim, and they set him up in an office. And this guy just brought in a shitload of original art. And I was floored. I, was, I couldn't believe, one, that he had all this different art, and two, that you could actually purchase it. It was just really... Uh, a surprise to me because I didn't really know what people did with the art. I, I mean, honestly, if you would have asked me uh, a month earlier, I, I honestly, if they would have told me, oh, you do the art and we keep all the art. I, I didn't know. I had no idea what the, what the setup was, but anyway, so I started collecting art almost immediately and I didn't have a very big budget. I had, you know, I I ended up getting a couple of more expensive pieces, but generally my budget was anywhere from about sixty to one hundred and fifty dollars, and and I would take my intern salary and buy like a piece or two. But anyway, so I've I've been involved in art collecting, and I'm really really good at pricing stuff. Um, I understand the value of comic art really well, and uh, I'm I'm definitely on it. I have uh, a really good small group of friends. A few are professional artists. A couple are, are very, very high-end collectors. Like, they would literally be considered, like, whales. Meaning, like, they have budgets that would make people tremble. <laughs> and we talk about art a lot. So, I got this. But what I'm going to try to do right now, and hopefully guide people, is if you've never sold any art. If you're an artist that isn't sure how to price art, what the value is, what to hold on to, what to not sell. I'll try to help you. Um, and uh, I don't even know what's in this pile. It doesn't even matter. The first thing that I'm going to say is we're going to ignore who the artist is. It doesn't matter. These are This happens to be a Victor Bogdanovic page, but I'm going to take that out of the equation. I'm even going to take the fact that it's a DC published page. We're just going to strip it down. And we're going to look what's on the page, and I'm going to tell you some basics. All right. So if nobody knows who you are as a comic book artist and you draw a page, um, man, this is going to be tricky. There's just so many variables. This could literally be like a 10 part video series. Anyway. So if, if you draw a Batman sample page and you want to sell it and it's never been published and, and, you know, people will talk about the ethics of this stuff. I'm not going to get into that. DC doesn't give a shit. <laughs> If you make a boutique business out of creating Batman art and selling it, then yeah, there might be a problem. If you do three sample pages of Batman and ultimately end up selling them, nobody fucking cares, all right? <laughs> Just think realistically about this stuff. 
if you're really pushing it and you're going to do like a print run of 150 Batman prints, then yeah, they might have a problem with it. Just use common sense. But anyway, so if no one knows your work and you've got a sequential page, say this was Batman and it's just pencils. I mean, honestly, if no one knows your work, you're probably going to get 50 to to $100 for it. And you can just kind of test the market. If you put it out for $100 and nobody buys it, then then you need to lower the price. I mean, that's pretty simple, um, you know, uh, awareness. Um, if you put it up for $50 and still no one buys it, well, then... I would hang on to it at that point, and, and, and what I mean by hang on to it is it may not be worth putting it out there, because like I mentioned in the other video is, if you're really going to do comic books, you're going to create a lot of original art, and at some point, um, you're going to ultimately be competing with yourself. Like If I went on eBay right now, and there was 150 pages that I had dumped for $25 a piece or whatever, uh, it wouldn't really help me sell a $250 piece that's that's nicer. It 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 might not hurt it because there are two different things, but but I would be careful about what you put out into the world, into the wild, quote unquote. So, um I would say the average for a sequential page What's interesting is, so $80 to me used to be like a pretty fair price, I thought for for a page that has some decent art on it and, and is like, um, not super desirable. I think it's a very, very fair price. Um, you're not underselling yourself and it's, it's somewhat affordable to someone that is seriously considering collecting art. If you know, I, I mean, I get all sorts of contact, uh, from people where, you know, they'll go like, oh, I would love to buy like a David Finch, like Batman page from you, but it has to have Batman on it. And I'm like, well, yeah, you and everyone else wants, wants those pages. They're, they're expensive because they're the most desirable. It's like the, the, I only collect splash pages and covers. It's like, all right, well, there's generally one per book and they're going to be the most expensive pieces because the other 80% of the collectors, that's all they want too. So interior pages are always the most challenging to sell. Uh, challenging meaning um, they're, they're potentially the least desirable, um, but that's not always the case. So I had a, There was a collector that commented on the video yesterday and said, I like interior pages, I like pedestrian pages because I can get nice art for cheaper. And that's another reality that you face as the artist who's passionate about the work. When I work with David Finch, David Finch's art sells great. There's no two ways about it. David has a very, very uh, strong original art buying audience, and he's also got a very mature art buying audience. And what I mean by that is David's been working professionally for 25 years. These people that follow David Finch's art, a lot of them are adults, meaning that maybe they were 20 when they first saw David's work. Now they're 45 and they've got a budget to buy art. And some of them have big budgets to buy art. Uh, but what ends up happening is you might do a Batman book with someone like David or yourself for that matter, whatever it is. And you, the scale slides, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it, w what you'll see what I'm talking about in a second is okay. Like David and I could have done a Batman page that took two hours to do just, it's a big Batman headshot with, with, um, you know, no background. It's just, it's just Batman frowning. It's, it's a big splash page that would sell for so much money, but yet you could do a page like this with commissioner Gordon and Robin out of costume flying a plane here and and it would have more art on the page uh more time spent by two professional artists meaning like maybe this took between david and i 20 hours to do this isn't a finch piece to be clear um so so you've got you know 20 hours of of work invested in it the level of dif difficulty doing it was way higher but but you might not ever be able to sell this alfred robin page um for for even one twentieth of the price of something that took you two hours to do, it's a weird thing, but it makes sense too. I mean, it's not like I'm not like uh, I I can't like not wrap my brain around why that is, but but it, it's the reality of of doing uh, comic book stories. Uh, a good example is Dustin Wynn and I. Uh, did Wildcats with Joe Casey, and Joe Casey didn't really want to do a superhero book, so we did 
about 16 issues of Wildcats. Um, and uh, about 60 to 70 percent of it was was literally, you know, stuff like this in an office, characters out of costume, uh, new characters that were kind of like acting as the original characters, but but weren't them. Um, and uh, the pages were really, really difficult to sell. I, You can get lucky, though, in situations like that and have like one or two collectors that love the pencilers work or love your work. Um, and and they want to buy them just because they love the art. And so like Madame Xanadu, uh, when I worked with Amy Reader, um, uh, I had one per one collector in particular, but but. Honestly, he's probably bought about 80 pages of this stuff over the last like four or five years. Uh, about once a year, he'll note me. Uh, we go through the art that I have left. He's actually buying the last pages now um, and, and uh, the last pages that I own of it. Um, and uh, yeah, and then he just pays it off. So I, I let him do payments and every month he like kicks me you know, like some money. And then uh, when he's paid up, we, we uh, send the art. So, um, yeah, so so any kind of panel to panel page, I would honestly never go lower than fifty dollars, forty at the lowest. And that's if you're really like just desperate for money um, and and, uh, you know, I would I, I would lean towards fifty to 150 for a sequential page splash pages you know you might try to go for 150 to 250 if you're like a newer penciler um 400 you're just gonna have to test your audience and then this is another thing that i would throw in is open market will definitely show you what your value is and it can be a terrifying thing and it can also be a detrimental thing and i'm going to explain what i'm talking about is there are artists who I've seen in the past start to sell art to one or two people for quite a bit of money. And I'm talking thousands, like $10,000. But that can be really dangerous because if you're selling directly to someone, you sell them a cover for 10 grand is just a simple example. We call it the 10 grand train. It's a level you want to get with your, with your cover work. <laughs> um, if that seller at some point, buyer, excuse me, at some point tries to sell that on the open market, meaning where people bid on it, and it only goes up to $3,000, $4,000, dollars you have got yourself a problem. And the problem is, is that buyer is never, ever going to buy a piece from you again for that amount of money. And yeah, you kind of got away with it, um, but it's a dangerous it's a dangerous game to play. So you want to be careful about taking advantage of one or two sort of generous buyers because you want to keep them around. You want to keep them happy. You want to keep them uh, buying art. Like here's an Ed Bennis cover that we did recently. There's really nothing on it. Actually, I'm going to go in and do um, a black background with like lightning because that's how the cover was originally penciled, but they asked me not to do it on the original just in case they were going to knock it out or do something different. But, you know, I mean, like, like, what does a cover like this sell for? It's very difficult to say. I'm not going to price this stuff in front of you, like, here, um, because it's, it's, if it was my work, I would do it, but because it's, it involves other artists, I'm not going to, like, de debate their work. But, like, okay, here's a Ryan ben Benjamin Batman page. So, You've got Batman this panel. It's a nice page, but there's no real clear shots of Batman. This is going to have less value than a page that has a clear shot of Batman. Um, you know, like um, like this. So hopefully you can see that. Like, this is one of the Batman pages. Like, this is a nice Batman page. Is it a knockout? Is it a splash page? No. So, I mean, I would try to take it as far as I can. Um, it, and the thing is, is if you're pricing out at a convention... Um, you're gambling a little bit if you're not sure what you're doing, because if I walk into a convention and put this at, at like say a hundred dollars, um, you know, it may sell like to the first person and maybe it really was a $200 page. So you want to kind of be aware, like here's like a more splashy image of Batman. Um, you know, what's Ryan's stock? What's his, what's his collector market willing to pay for something like this? I just I'm going to have to kind of guess and, and play it by ear and and hope I make the right call. Um, uh, there was something else I was going to say about. Uh... Oh, OK. Like like this is a pretty interesting example. So a long time ago, I inked Will Portacio on a book called Batman Confidential 
And for some reason, we had done other work together, and I ended up getting the first cover back. And uh, I put it up on Comic Art Fans one Saturday morning for what I thought was actually quite a bit of money. Um, and uh, Wilson's stuff wasn't super hot then. He was kind of like, on, he was sort of rebounding. Um, and he had been like kind of off the grid for a little bit. And, and uh, you know, even though it was a Batman book, it was not like, like, it just wasn't like a hot thing. And uh, so I put it up and, and uh, I had, had two or three notes kind of immediately and I sold it pretty fast that morning. As the day went on, I had about, honestly, I'm not even exaggerating, I think somewhere between 60 and 80 other notes of people that wanted to buy it. So what I realized is I probably had priced it too low. So you want to be careful about that too. You know, like error on the side of, and this is, I'm talking to artists here, error on the side of overpricing your stuff a little bit because you can always move it down, but you don't want to regret putting something too low. And I don't regret that sale. Honestly, there's, there's nothing that I've ever sold that I actually regret, which I'm, I'm happy about because it means I've kind of made the right calls. Um, you know, but yeah, I mean, it would be tough to like, like if 10 years from now, some of the David Finch forever evil stuff that we worked on, you know, like if it became a movie and all of a sudden the pages were selling for like 50 grand a piece or something that could sting a little bit, but I, I haven't had to deal with that too much. I've seen people though. There's, I've definitely sold David Finch, uh, Batman pages for, um, what I consider pretty high prices and then seeing people turn around and sell them for like three, four times what I, what I sold them for. But I think that that's actually more of a positive, um, indication of the art than, um, the opposite. Like I said, I, I would rather have the, the person that bought the art from me make money than lose money because if they lose money, they're not going to come back and buy more art from you. So it's definitely something to consider. All right. So this is some pretty honest and direct talk about, you know, the, the, the commerce of, of original art, but yeah, you don't want people losing art on art sales for you. So you're, you, you're better off, especially if it's an expensive piece. You want to treat those those uh, collectors with kid gloves and make sure that they're happy and that hopefully they want to come back and buy more art from you. I would say this, though, and this is just a warning for artists, is your value is the art that you have. And um, when you don't have art that these people want, they're probably not going to do you any favors. So don't get caught up in any kind of relationships with them. It sounds harsh, but I'm telling you, it's like they're going to be your best friend if you have something that they want. <laughs> it's just so bad. It's true, though. This is the reality of it is like like they'll be so like nice, you know, and they they because they desperately want to get a certain piece from you and, and maybe they want a good deal. But, you know, when when they have the art in their hands and, and that is gone and they don't you don't have anything that they want. I mean, a lot of times they, they, they won't be rude, but they really, you know, that was it. That was the relationship was just, there was the romance of them getting the page from you and then it's kind of over and, and, uh, it's just something to be aware of. It's, I don't even consider it a negative, but it, it is a reality of it. So you want to be careful because some people are genuinely cool and will, will treat you well. And they're the best, best people to have in your life because when the chips are down they're going to step up and help you out and then you know a lot of the other people that you buy it's a kind of a one and done deal no matter what what the sort of relationship is leading up to the sale so you know i've worked on a lot of different stuff so i've dealt with a lot of different experiences i mean i think j scott campbell chris Bocolo, travis jim lee John Romita Jr. I mean, it goes on and on. And, and so I've dealt with every level of collector out there um, and then even selling my own art. Um, so, yeah, it's it's interesting and it's non transferable. Trust me, um, you know, because, you know, I could literally ink a Jim Lee piece in the morning and then ink something else at night. And the value of those two pieces is completely different just based on the penciler alone. Um, and, uh, again, the content on the page really, really makes a difference. If you're doing self-published work, then you're going to be testing that fan base that's into those characters. If you're doing character driven work of known characters, that helps for sure. If you have Harley Quinn on your pages or Deadpool or whatever it is, those pages will definitely sell easier than, you know, unknown characters or characters that haven't really matured yet. 
And then again, your collecting audience will mature. The longer you stay working in comics, and hopefully you build your your brand, quote unquote, or or you know you just get better and you become you know what you're going to be. If you're considered an A-lister, then you're going to start getting A-list sales prices. Um, you know, if your your star shines bright for a moment and then kind of dims out, then the prices might go down. It's hard to say. It's it's an interesting thing. What 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 I'm finding now because I've been involved in comics for a long time is I'm curious of what the next ten years holds for a lot of um, the art that's out there uh, because there's a lot of people that I believe overpaid for stuff. And I want to see how those prices hang in there. They're not. I mean, the thing is, is if if a collector is overpaid for a piece, they're going to be very, very resistant to trying to flip it and lose money. That's not part of the game. But if no one will buy it for the overpaid price that they did, um, you know, it's kind of a stalemate. So it'll be interesting. But yeah, I would say five. Five to ten years ago, like that window of five years back to about ten years back, um, there was some pretty crazy prices going on for art. And I'm not talking about the big, like, sort of name auctions, like, oh, an amazing Spider-Man Todd McFarlane cover went for a lot of money. Th that, that did happen, but that's not the art I'm talking about. I'm talking about contemporary art that has just literally been done, has had no time to mature, um, selling for, for pretty insane prices, or, or, or people asking, you know... It, completely insane prices for stuff and there's people that have bought them you know there's people that have a lot of money that have they've really really spent a lot of money on like a brand new cover it's a risky thing like here's so this is brent peoples he's a new artist i mean he did major x recently but i mean this is new superman with brent peoples this is a hard page to sell i wouldn't take it to comic-con because it's not gonna i mean none of these characters are are really like uh you know gonna like set the world on fire um and i brent is so new in comics that that he doesn't probably have a huge collecting market to begin with um so yeah i mean it all it all kind of like compounds but you know someone like brent might do really good with commissions where people can come see him at a show and get what they want from him because they're fans of his work but they have a favorite character so i hope that that gives you some insight into um pricing art i don't there wasn't very much in this stack of art that i would actually take to comic-con some of the ryan benjamin batman stuff i probably will and maybe a couple of the vic pages but other than that there really wasn't a ton in here that was like catching my eye i have a lot more art to go through but yeah you know i mean co covers generally i would say don't sell any like if you're super super new three to five hundred dollars and if you've got a little bit of steam and then as you move up the ladder you know one to three grand if you can crack five, that's really, really impressive. But you're going to definitely have to have some name and character sort of interest behind it. And then, um, yeah, if you can get on the 10K train, which I don't know if it still exists as strongly as it did a, a, a few years back. But that's where you start to make some pretty silly money in a good way. You know, look, I want artists to win. I mean, that's that's what I'm about. So, you know... Good luck with it, and uh, yeah, you know, work hard, play hard. Not <laughs> All right, have a great day. I need to work. Later.